Well, hello my friends and welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week we have several things going on, but mainly uh, I would say the farm is in transition again. And part of it is we're getting ready to plant, plant spring bulbs and ranunculus, anemones, sweet peas, all the things all over again. It feels like it is just gone so fast. But Emma and I have been ripping out some of the things in the gardens, just kind of getting everything kind of cleaned up. We had some gardens, especially my cool garden. Every year it feels like it just gets away from me. And so this year we thought, you know, it's just, let's just whack it back. And we've got several events coming up here on the farm with family um, events and so, just trying to really push at it and try and get some stuff done. I know this next week we have a big project over by the other new greenhouse. We have some raised beds coming in and we have a whole bunch of soil being brought in. So that'll probably be on next week's video. And I'm also working on kind of a little area out there which I keep calling the dry garden or the Mediterranean garden. So I'm gonna be working on that this coming week. But this week, Riley and her dad did a little project together. So here's a little look at what they did together. So today, Riley had to run to the hardware store because we need some staples, but I am working on cutting the boards because we're going to build a new bookshelf for Riley in the uh, yurt. So I'm cutting the cross boards right now, and then we'll um, we're gonna get the uprights ready to go. And yeah, we're going to put it all together. Riley's going to sand it, stain it, and we'll uh, gonna bring you guys along. Watch me build this. So Riley and I had been out looking for a bookshelf. She really wanted a bookshelf, and she had something in mind. She loves to read, which has not always been the case. When she was about, oh, I'd say in sixth, seventh grade, uh, she really struggled with reading. She had a tutor, we did, you know, and I. she grew up reading because that's what my father did. We read all the books together and he was very theatrical about it, you know, Lord of the Rings and um, just all the different you know, books like Narnia and, you know, just the plethora of things, you know, he would always do Bible stories as well. And he was always in character. So reading to me was a big deal. And I, we grew up without a TV. So uh, that was kind of how my children were raised, even though we had a TV, it was very, very limited and books were a big deal. But Riley just had always struggled, 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 struggled with reading. And I believe she was in seventh grade when um, a couple trending books came out. I think one of them was Twilight, which I wasn't super thrilled about, but I also didn't quite understand what it was. But um, she read that book. I mean, it was huge. It was bigger than her, I think. <laughs> and she would carry that thing around. It took her forever to read. But that book, and then she read the Harry Potter series, th those books captured her imagination and what books brought to somebody's life. So now, ever since then, I have not been able to get her out of a book. You will see her making bouquets, doing arrangements, either listening to a book, having a book on the Kindle, anytime she <laughs> runs to the bathroom, anything she's reading. She's always got a book. So in her yurt, we have this area where she had a shelf. So Riley and I looked and looked and looked at um, antique stores. We measured, we thought about them. A lot of them were maybe more than what she wanted to spend. Uh, the ones she really liked were out of her budget. And so she's like, you know, I've always wanted to build something. So I'm like, you know, this is a great opportunity. And Jay and I have been doing a little more parenting. Our kids are with us longer and I think that's kind of normal these days. Really hard for kiddos to be able to afford to live, especially in our area, on their own. And Riley works for us. We have the yurt. She lives out there and Braden's going to school. So we have both of our kids here and we've just really seized the opportunity to 
work with them and teach them some life skills that maybe not everyone gets an opportunity to learn. So my husband's very good at woodworking, amazing. And when he puts his mind to something, it turns out absolutely beautiful. So, you know, I chatted with him. I said, you know, Riley really wants to do this bookshelf. I think this would be a good time to teach her some of these carpentry skills. She never took, you know, like I took woodworking, she didn't. Um, and so I kind of know I wouldn't be able to do anything, but uh, anyways, Jason is an expert at building anything. So he took Riley under his wing and they had so much fun, you know, going just even to the hardware store, uh, the lumber store, getting things. And he really just let her kind of choose and pick out things, but also you know, she had this creative side of her that really had this vision for what she wanted and he really came alongside her and helped her with that. And, you know, this is just, you know, something that is just a bonding kind of thing. And sometimes we think about bonding with our children when they're young, but actually I think our children need us more as they get older. And, um, yeah, so I was just really, really proud of both of them, how they just tackled this project. Uh, so Riley uh, worked on it super, super hard. She picked out the stain. Uh, everything and I think that means something to kids nowadays when they can actually work really hard for something and build and work with their hands and um, the next next project I'm working on is with Brayden we're gonna be working on a pond we started on it but um, I really want him to be able to he really enjoys gardening but really to own a garden is really key and he has this vision so that's what I'm gonna be working on with him I have been working with him as far as canning. We've been doing a little bit of canning together, making jam, making bread. He loves to make cakes and cook. He did dinner the other night for us. And so kind of taking that role, he's been cleaning, keeping the house clean for me this summer. So I used to have a housekeeper come in just once every two weeks just to do the bathrooms and floors. But he's been doing all that for me this year. And so and then Riley's doing more of the farm chores, more of the gardening, more of uh, like now she has got this woodworking skill and she really is enjoying that. So I'm excited to see her take off with that. But just teaching our children kind of this rounded things that they can do and not sticking to the um, kind of what's traditionally thought of as, as a woman's role and a man's role. I My parents did that with us girls there they had eight girls or nine girls and three boys but they did that with all of us kids and so I mean it's nothing new but I just you know I'm just seeing it a little bit more in our own family and just kind of proud of that so anyways I think it turned out beautiful so they're almost done they look so good though so the last thing I have to do is finish standing this one and then I'm going to stain them all and we're going to put we're going to put tongue and groove on the back of these as like an accent so you don't see like the yurt through them um, and they'll be finished after that. But yeah, they turned out really cool. The middle one is kind of like different and fun. I have another shelf in the yurt that dad built me like years ago that has this similar look to it and I kind of wanted to incorporate that so that they're kind of coincide with each other. But yeah, it's gonna be really nice. I'm excited to finish these and be done. I'm gonna mostly put books here, but I might like have some like knickknacks on here. There's a mirror that's gonna be here in the middle. That's why I don't have just all tall ones. There's a mirror here, so this is gonna be another little I don't know, display sort of thing. I definitely don't have enough books to fill this whole thing, so I definitely will have things going in there until they're like full, which I don't know how long that'll take knowing my book spending habits. But <laughs> yes, I'm really excited about it. It's definitely something that I've been wanting for a long time, and I'm glad that I'm gonna have these forever, so. It's so hot today, guys. It is muggy, there's smoke everywhere which was such an opposite to the thunderstorm we had last night. Like at three o'clock in the morning, the whole family comes running outside being woken up by thunder to move these back into the studio. And then I had to bring them back outside this morning, but we finally get to put this project to rest and bring them into the yurt and start styling them.
thing. Walls aren't straight, so these guys are gonna have to be a little curved. No necessarily perfect, but they're perfect to me because I made them. They just need to be dusted off now because they've been outside and it's dusty out there. Dust them off and then I get to decorate them tomorrow, I think. And this mirror obviously is going to be lowered down. Anyway, I think these are gonna look really good once they're all done. I'm really excited to have them done. I think they're great and I think you made a good choice of not going with one of the vintage ones we found and doing your original idea of actually building something and I'm really proud of you. Thank you. I'm super sweaty now. So it is really hot. Back on. Yes. It's 85 degrees in here. Sigurd is like a thriller mystery writer. I haven't read any of his books, so I just picked this one up to give it a try because I haven't read any thrillers and I'm hearing that I need to jump on that bandwagon. Pretty much this is like people are driving together that are strangers to get to the same destination and they have to survive, that's all I know. Um, the Inheritance Game, this is like a YA book. I actually don't know much about this. Pretty much gets called up that she has inherited this thing and she has to go through a bunch of puzzles and there's a mystery to it and that's all I know about that. Um, Once Upon a Broken Heart, I've heard um, so many things about this and so many people being like, this is my favorite book ever or this book like didn't hit, but mostly good things. 
Um, I don't know much about it other than that it's a fairy tale and it's like a dark fairy tale I believe. I don't know if it's a retelling. Pretty much this girl sells her soul. I don't know. This one, also don't know anything about this but I've been told that I need to read it. So this is The Secret History. I'm told this is like the most fall vibes and also that you have to be kind of smart to read this. I consider myself a smart individual and if I need to take my time reading this then I will. Pretty much is about like a secret society, it's giving dead poet society vibes, um, meets going to a high-end education school and there's mystery and then murder and things happening and I'm really excited. Okay. I picked this up on a whim but I've been wanting to read more werewolf books because that's where I started off is werewolves and vampires. So this is uh, Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. This is about a girl who accidentally gets attacked by a werewolf and starts turning into a werewolf herself. This book, I am so excited to read this book. This is called The Seven Year Slip. Pretty much, if you watch the movie The Lake House, it's the same vibe where there's two people that are existing in the same plane, but they're in opposite times in the same area. Does that make sense? Like one person's in seven years in the past and one year person's in seven years in the future, but they can see each other in the same house and they fall in love. And that's all I know, but it sounds really, really exciting and fun. Anyway, that's just some of the books I have on my TBR. Okay, it's the next day. I uh, just woke up a couple, like maybe an hour ago, but I finished this morning just putting all of my books on my shelves. Pretty much how I have it ordered, not that it really matters, is uh, this side are books that I haven't read yet and want to read. Up here is my fall, these two shelves pretty much, are my fall TBR, fall to be read. And then the rest of them are just more books that I haven't gotten to. And then over here are books, most, these ones are all ones like romance books that I've read and like love and my favorites and things like that. Um, and then this middle shelves here um, are just all my fantasy and things like that. Uh, but to finish this off, I just wanted to add in a couple more books. Uh, one thing that I really want to do over fall and winter is extend my knowledge of gardening and what better way than reading. And so I have a couple books that Beth has recommended to me, my mother, you know, uh, to read over fall and winter so that I can learn a lot more. One of them is The Independent Farmstead. This is by Sean and Beth. Dugerty. I'm so sorry if that's wrong. Um, pretty much this is just about homesteading and farming and knowledge about raising animals and plants and just the in and outs of it. I eventually really want to get goats so I think that this would be a really great thing to add to my things I need to read. Extend my knowledge. Um, next is Down to Earth by Monty Don. Uh, as you guys know, we freaking love Gardener's World. It is a cult classic in this household. We watch it almost every day. We love Monty Don. This is pretty much just a book about gardening and coziness and just different things about the garden. And I'm really excited. Um, and then the last book I want to read, I actually, guys, I don't know if I'm a horrible daughter or what, but I actually haven't read my mother's book, for a Flower. And I hear so many good things about it, and I just, I haven't read it yet. And I feel like I need to do that. So, um, if you didn't know, Beth wrote, Beth and her sister, Sarah, wrote a book this last summer. I think it came out this spring. And it's called Fur on Flower, and it's pretty much a bunch of short stories about growing up and her family, or my family. Duh. And fun things and what's really cool about it is it is seasonal so there's actually a whole section that's just fall a whole section that's just autumn and i'm really excited to 
read it for our flower. That's the extent of my bookshelves. I mean, thank you guys so much for joining me on this lovely journey of learning how to build things. It's been really fun. I Tomorrow, me, Emma, my mom, and Sylvia are heading up a really cool flea market and some antique shelves that we love so that I can get some more things to decorate the year because now I have so much more space. Thanks, guys! enjoyed that video and I hope that inspires you to maybe do something a little bit out of the box with your children or grandkids or even for yourself so challenge yourself to do something I know Riley was really challenged she thought you know I'm not sure if I can do this you know there was a lot of fear that went into it what if I build it wrong <laughs> and I'm like no you're gonna do great because your dad's right there but I think this has given her the confidence to do something that she could do totally on her own without her dad navigate the hardware stores and the the lumber stores and be able to just own it so she's really excited about that i'm so proud of her and all those books just look amazing in the yurt i just it's almost like a decorative piece and something she's gonna cherish forever so anyways well until next week much success in all you do and grow and we'll be seeing you back here at crowley house very soon Bye bye